The other one is in driver's ed right now in the other room. So um, as long as you can see my kind of working, I'm gonna use my burner here to do a lot of the work. So uh, you'll see my hands moving and my voice. Okay, all right, let's get started. The first thing, uh, and thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, we're gonna do the holiday size because that's something that uh, everybody's always looking for uh, when I do classes, people are always asking about different sides to do. We're going to start off with the roasted uh, sweet potato and Brussels sprouts first, uh, because that's going to go in the oven. And then we're going to move on to the squash, the butternut squash soup, and then do the uh, stewed apples. Okay. All right. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to be working with some Brussels sprouts beautiful Brussels sprouts I got picked up today. I like to get my ingredients as fresh as possible when I'm working. So we're gonna half these and I'm um, gonna put them in a colander here. Do just a quick wash of these. And then we're gonna take the ends off and then half those, okay? So here's our, this is about, uh, this is one pound of Brussels sprouts. I got these from Food Lion. Uh, Harris Cheater has them as well. Of course, if you've gone, you've gone in the store, it looks a little apocalyptic out there. Okay, and I'm gonna be working with my chef's knife here, uh, but you can also use a parent knife as well. Okay, so we're gonna take these nice Brussels sprouts here and I'm just gonna cut the ends off here. And then you can take off the little the end pieces here and then I'm just gonna half it like that. Everybody see that? Okay, again. Okay. All right, so we're gonna continue to do this just for a minute. So is uh, everybody getting ready for the holidays as much as we can in the middle of a pandemic? Feel free to ask questions or stop me as we go along. Tiffany, I also want to let you know that um, we have Kate Watts on uh, with us. She's a registered dietitian, so you'll see her name and she'll be able to pop in too with you. Okay. Okay, great, great, great. So, hey, Tiffany, it's me. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm excited to be joining you tonight. So yeah, if anyone has any nutrition or food questions, um, that's what I'm here for. And I've got a few little facts and tidbits on our uh, Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes too that I can sprinkle in when we have some downtime. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to continue to do this. Um, and these are great sides. I mean, I like working with items, uh, vegetables and items you can use throughout the year and kind of make a little versatile. And if you want to kind of mix things up a little bit in your holiday dishes. Um, a lot of times, you know, when I work with other groups, sometimes people are afraid to work with different ingredients because they're just not used to it. But that's the part of learning. Okay, we're gonna continue to do this. Do a few more of these. That is so true, Tiffany. We actually have a dietitian that likes to say, um, if people can learn to like scotch, they can learn to like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> right, right. And it and really is just infusing. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Just put a little flavor in, in items. Um, so they're not, they don't have that bland uh, taste. A lot of times people, um, I don't cook with a whole lot of seasons. I was actually telling my students that I use some, and I'll share with some of you, share tonight some of the seasons that I work with. Uh, who are really my go-to seasonings um, that are really helpful. My nephew, my nephew is here, lives with me, and he's like, um, so what are we going to eat tonight? And he's already told his friends, my aunt's doing a cooking class, so uh, you'll be able to, we'll eat something good soon. So, and we're going to pair this. Just a minute, and they'll... Sweet potatoes are in abundance right now. I think if my aunt brings me one more bag of sweet potatoes from somebody's garden, 
they keep running out to Castle County, I think every other day. <laughs> Their garden didn't do too hot. So she said, Tim, I brought you some more sweet potato. I said, okay. And so my dad is from Tabor City, North Carolina, which is the yam capital of the world. So he gets a bushel and brings them back all the time. So we get we get our share of sweet potatoes and yams. That is the great thing about sweet potatoes being practically in season all year long in North uh -huh. Carolina. Oh yeah. Today, now, I got some we're the number one producer of sweet potatoes in the United States. Uh -huh. We have been for like the last 50 years. Uh, kind of cool. Here, I got some medium-sized sweet potatoes. I'm just going to peel those, and I'm using my paring knife now. Okay, so I'm using a paring knife. Just going to take that outer skin off. Of course, a lot of people... It's kind of hard to live in the South and not eat sweet potatoes. Um, I lived up North for a while and it was, it was very difficult to deal with the fact that they do not brew a lot of sweet tea up there. <laughs> they brought me some sugar packets and I like to cry. So, all right, here. At the outer edge here. Just kind of clean that up a little bit. Lord knows they can be a little dirty, so sometimes I'll re just wash the outer edge just a little bit after I get through peeling them. Okay, now this other one, one thing about sweet potatoes, they, they come in all different sorts of sizes, so what I'm going to do with this one here, I'm just going to cut it in half so it's easier for me to work with. Now this is a chef knife that I'm working with. I'm just gonna kind of bear down on it a little bit so I get a nice, even, clean cut. Out of all the knives I work with, the chef knife, you always gonna do about 90% of work with the chef knife. And I got my parent knife here and then I'm just holding it so it don't hit my wrist. I'm just kind of getting up under there. Now, if you have a vegetable peeler, that works even just as, just as well. I'll peel that. Now, when you're preparing these type of dishes, it's going to take a little bit longer in the oven. That's why anything in the anything that has to go in the oven, go ahead on and get that in. Uh, so you, and then that way it frees you up to go on and work on your other dishes. So here, get that one done. Okay, here. And then one more, just kind of get that one. It has a bad type of groove in there. So we're gonna get that peeled. Good. I know I went into food line today and Lord knows the folks had just lit it up. I mean, it was, it was nothing. <laughs> toilet paper, that toilet paper, paper towel. It just had the, the, the price tags out there. I mean, they had snatched up everything. I said, boy, these grocery stores are making a killing. <laughs> so we're going to get these peeled good here. Any questions so far? Okay, got this working here. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. When you were preparing the Brussels sprouts, I noticed there was some things that you didn't want to put in this dish. Can some of those be used in soups or stews or in some other way so that there's yes. not any waste? Yes, ma'am. So these outer edges, um, now these can be a little tough, of course, the ends, but these absolutely, yeah. And you can treat it just like, a, you know, cabbage, of course, and saute it down, put it, you know, some uh, onion, chicken stock, make a soup, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my cutting board off. Now under my cutting board, I got a, a paper towel because I don't want it to move on me while I cut these up. Now I got my knife again here. Just gonna cut that down here.
Now I'm just gonna cube these up here. And I want them nice and even so they'll all cook evenly. And this, you know, two sweet potatoes, they're gonna make a nice, nice amount. I love the color, it has that nice fall color to it. Does anyone know what gives a sweet potato its orange color? What nutrient inside does that? Is it a carotene? That's right. Yeah, so sweet potatoes are one of the best. I mean, they are loaded with beta carotene and our body converts that to vitamin A. And that's what gives the potatoes their lovely fall orange color. Um, and it's also great for our vision and our immunity. Um, that's what the vitamin A does um, in our body. So that's one of our, that and sweet potatoes and carrots are some of our best sources of that beta carotene. And that's, they're both orange because it comes right from that nutrient. I have a question. What's the difference between a sweet potato and a yam? That's a great question. Um, I used to know that, but. Is it just a cultural thing or is there truly a difference? I, I, I don't know. I know that yams tend to be um, a little bit more kind of reddish orange color. And I mean, I I can't tell the difference. I don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> like, I honestly thought they were the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I've used them interchangeably, but I, I never knew if there was actually a difference. Yeah. And it might be where they're grown different regions because Tabor, uh, Tabor City, where my dad is from, they're the yam capital of the world. But when he bring the boss back home and say sweet potato mom. So. <laughs> okay. So we got our Brussels sprouts and potato and sweet potatoes all in the bowl here. I'm just gonna toss these. I'm gonna use a little extra virgin olive oil here. Olive oil here. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit of um, salt and fresh cracked black peppers. I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here and I'm gonna have a pepper grinder. This really gives a good pepper flavor and you can use the white. If you're trying to work on the salt, just, just lay back on the salt a little bit. Okay, here, and I'm using sea salt. The recipe calls for kosher, but you can use whatever you like. I like um, sea salt. I don't have to use that much of it. That's what I like. Now I'm just gonna toss this a little bit. Oh, with my hands, all them out on me. Okay, and you just wanna make sure they're nice and coated. Okay, now while I'm doing this, I'm gonna rinse my hands off, and then I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more olive oil. So it's a cost of one fourth cup. Okay. Then we'll add a little bit more salt. You just want to make sure all of them are nice and coated. I love this pepper grinder. Really puts that pepper flavor in. So I'm going to toss this again. Okay. Make sure everything is nice and coated. Okay. Now, can you add onions to this? Red pepper? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, one thing about vegetables, the more the merrier. okay? Okay, now, nice good shine to it. That's what you want, okay? That's my hands. Now, I have my baking sheet here. I already got my oven preset, so I have my baking sheet here. If you don't have parchment paper, you can use aluminum foil or just spray the pan. Okay, you just don't want it to stick on it. But the parchment paper, I like working with it because it's easy to clean up and it's oven safe. So we're just gonna evenly spread these out onto the baking sheet here, making sure they're nice. Everything is nice and covered. If you run across a few that's not, you see it's kind of falling off, that's fine. You can let it cook on right along with it. If you notice a little bit that it's not quite covered, just hit it again. It's not gonna hurt to put add a little bit more salt. You just wanna make sure the seasoning hits all the vegetables, okay? And now we're ready for the oven, okay? So we're gonna put this in the oven. 
everybody's oven is different. I have my oven set at 400. The recipe calls for 450. Um, but you're going to get that nice roasted uh, color on that. And we're going to put these in there for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. Any questions before they go in the oven? Okay. Now, can you do these on, on, the, on, on the top of the stove? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just, uh, you'll probably start off with just medium uh, high heat. You don't want it too hot because then it'll burn. Okay. Um, the, the sweet potatoes will take a little bit. If you do it on top of the stove, the sweet potatoes is going to take a little bit longer than the Brussels sprouts. So you want to start the sweet potatoes first, then add in your Brussels sprouts. Okay. So these are ready for the oven. Put these on the, I'm putting these on the bottom rack. I got the oven. I'm going to pop that all up here. Okay. And then let that go. All right. Now I'm just going to switch gears. Okay. Up. Now I'm going to go ahead on and cut up my onion and my butternut squash, okay? This is my butternut squash here. Now, uh, these are great for the fall. People love them as decoration, but they are wonderful roasted in the oven. And uh, I'll tell you a quick story while we're doing this. We did a butternut squash last semester with my students and I missed so much being in the classroom. And we spent all day preparing the, the butternut squash soup. And we roasted about 20 of these in the oven. And so one of the students had some uh, big earrings she had just bought, her mom had bought them for her. I mean, they were the huge, huge, huge earrings. And so we're, uh, we put the immersion blender in this huge stock pot. I'm talking about huge. And she dropped her earring over in that soup. Oh. And when I say those kids, Lord, I thought they were going to kill that girl. I mean, they wanted to go to her tail something terrible, but I held them off because we had to throw that out because she had contaminated the seat. So we had to start all the way back over. Um, early, I had to get there at four o'clock in the morning to put those uh, squash on. Boys, uh, well, I was a little hot, but it was a learning experience, but you don't want to do that again. Okay, so here, I'm going to show you how to cut it down and make it a lot more, um, a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to cut this part off first. Okay. Now it's good to have a good sharp knife. Okay. And then I'm going to cut the back end off. Okay. Nice cut here. Okay. Now I'm going to cut it in half because it's still a little bit uh, hard to work with. So I'm going to just make two half pieces here. Okay. Now I can kind of stand them up, okay? See that? Okay, so here, what I'm gonna do is kind of cut off the outer edge, okay? Now, you can take a pan knife and do the same thing like that. Now this, this um, butternut squash skin is a little tough, okay? So you have to work your pan knife a little bit more for that, or if you have a vegetable pillar, do that as well. What I'm gonna do, uh, I'm just going to take my chef's knife and take the back, the sides of it off. Okay. Okay. Now I love working with butternut squash. Um, these are not as ripe as I would have liked, but for the sake of this demo. Okay. Now, if you do not feel comfortable doing this, Food Line, Harris Teeter, I don't know about Aldi, but I know Food Line Harris City all sell these already cut up. So you don't have to do this and avoid doing a lot of cutting if you don't like to work with, uh, you don't like to do a whole lot of cutting. Uh, I've noticed that over the years, even at 40 years old, sometimes my hands can get a little arthritis in them because I'm working with my hands so much. So sometimes I do get the cute, the fresh ones that are cute. Don't get the ones that are frozen because they have a whole lot of water in it and you have to add too much uh, seasoning in your, um, uh, to your vegetables. So sometimes you can put too much salt in it because you're, um, because you're trying to make up for that watery taste that takes away from it. Okay, so we're gonna continue to work here. What 
do you look for when you're when you're um, picking out a squash? How do you know? I, I want it like to be um, firm. If it has a little give to it, it's okay. You don't want it definitely. You don't want it mushy. Now these are not as ripe as I would like, but it's, it's still good and firm, as you can see. Okay, uh, they just kind of probably just set these out, uh, so they look like they had just box, you know. So, uh, but I, that's what I look for. A lot of bruises on them, just some nice, uh, beautiful color on them. You see how nice and orange that is. That's going to make a really great soup. Uh, and they don't keep a lot of these in the store, so they tend to be nice and fresh. Um, I like food lions. Certain food lions have really good vegetable. You can never go wrong with Harris Teeter. I hate to plug that in there. I used to work for them, but they do have very good vegetable. They tend to be a little bit more expensive, but you're looking at quality, too. You get what you pay for. Lowe's, it all depends who working. Sometimes they stuff can sit out a little bit too long. So um, I do like getting vegetables from, um, from uh, Harris Teeter and Food Line. All these is good too. Uh, they do go tend to go bad quickly. I've noticed with even with their strawberries, stuff like that, they can go bad pretty quick. Okay, so I'm just gonna get the outer edge of this steel. Pause for a little water. Excuse me one second. Have to get a little water. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, so. Here, I'm gonna cut this, okay? Now you see my seeds here. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take a, a spoon and I'm just gonna clean that out. Now, can you roast seeds just like pumpkin seeds? Absolutely. I'm just, but for the purposes of the soup, I don't want this. Take that membrane on out, let's clean it out. So I'll show you all how we do that. Pull that out. Taking the spoon. Clean that out. Okay. Okay. Now, sometimes you have to, if it don't come out, just take your knife and kind of run that around. Okay. You see that it's nice and cleaned out. We'll do the same thing with our other one. Take your spoon, go around. Take your spoon, go around. I'm just dumping that in the sink here so it don't fly all over the counter. Here, kind of just scoop it right on out. All right. <coughs> I'm gonna turn my fan on. It's getting a little warm in here. I'm starting to cough a little bit. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna take these at the same. I'm gonna turn them over here. It's gonna be easier for me to work with. And I'm just gonna cute make small little cuts here. Turn it over here. Now I want them. Now I'm going to make a small soup, so I'm going to cut down because I'm just going to kind of make it, I'm just going to do a rough chop 
of these. And when I mean rough, they don't have to be in a certain way because we're going to blend this up. But I want it just enough so I can kind of handle it. Okay, here. All right, so I got my squash right there. And I'm just going to add this last piece. I'm not going to use this one. It's going to make plenty of soup for me. Okay, so I got my soup going. Now, while my soup is, while my soup is going, I'm going to go ahead on, get my pot going here. Okay, I'm gonna let that uh, get heated up. Okay, so while that's going, I'm gonna put a little bit of butter, two tablespoons, but because I'm cutting this down a little bit, I'm just gonna put one tablespoon of butter I've noticed that, you know, I use butter. It adds so much flavor to your dishes. Okay, here. So while that's kind of melting a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead on and get my onion going. Okay. I'm just gonna use half of this onion. This is just a regular medium yellow onion here. Bit. Now, this is a step that's really going to add the flavor to your um, soup. So here, I'm just going to cut up this onion. Even dice here. Oh, hold on one second. That was a little too hot. That butter was trying to burn on me. So let me add a little bit. Turn that heat down just a little bit. We'll start that over again. That burnt butter will get in your food and it's no getting it out, you know, so you have to start all over. And that's okay, you know, that's part of cooking. So I got my onions going here. I'm gonna cook these until they're a little translucent. And this is just gonna help start releasing some of that natural onion flavor into that butter, okay? Now, you can add a little bit of salt, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a little fresh cracked black pepper to this, okay? Okay, let that kind of turn the heat down just a little bit. I tell you, this old little one-eye burner, she, she can get cranked up pretty good there, <laughs> okay? So here, so I got that working, okay? Now, you're gonna cook the onions. Okay. Now, when I mean translucent, I want that, see it's kind of turning this color here. That's what I want. It's gonna give me that nice, you can just start smelling the onion flavor. I mean, it's just, and that's gonna infuse into that squash. Now, I'm gonna cook, this is another little trick. I'm gonna cook some of the squash into that onion already to get some of that flavor before I add my stock, okay? You don't wanna burn it. You just wanna kinda get some good seasoning into that. And you see at each time I'm just adding a little bit, I'm just adding layers of flavor, so again, and this is really what helps you to get that, 
that flavor into food is just keep, you know, you gotta keep, uh, add layers of flavor, okay? So this step, it seems so simple, but this is really what separates that soup. You dump everything in the pot, then you don't really get a chance to get some of those natural flavors out of your food. And so it ends up being like a one note type of dish that doesn't have a lot of flavor. You've been to those church events and some of that stuff, people bring them casseroles and things. You seem like they don't there. You don't want to talk about them, but you like, Lord have mercy. You know, it, it can be a little rough sometimes. I know I had, I was used to work at Harris Theater and this lady was, um, she, the, the church social was not until Sunday that she didn't want to pay the extra $2 on Sunday, called the fried chicken at Harris Cedar is $4.99 on Friday. So she was like, well, I'm gonna buy it and just keep it till Sunday. And I, I knew she goes, to, I ain't gonna call no name because y'all might be a member. But anyway, she, I knew who she was. I knew what church she was talking to, talking about. And I called my, my friend whose husband's father is the pastor. I said, hey, this lady is going to be bringing some parents to the chicken down there. Y'all make sure y'all get something else. So, you know, that was kind of funny, but I told her that three day old fried chicken, I don't know if that's going to be any good, but you see the nice color that's coming on that squash. Okay, any questions so far? Now, by no means is that squash done, and we don't expect it to. We just want to get that little brown, kind of that little toast on that squash. It's going to help it to cook in those onions. Now, we're going to hit it with a little chicken stock, chicken stock here. Okay, now I'm just using a hair seeder. Now, you, see, you hear that sizzle? You hear that? Okay. That's called deglazing. So what happened is that that chicken, that cold stock is gonna bring that looked like burnt butter, but it was just the flavor from those onions. It's gonna bring it to the top. So it's gonna allow for that to just cook in that, it's gonna bring that, that cold um, chicken stock is gonna bring um, that, um, those, those like kind of like burnt pieces up off the top. Now, what's that gonna do? Add more flavor, okay? So that's how people make homemade um, homemade chicken stock they'll, or a beef stock. They'll brown, there's typically in the oven, of course, they'll brown the beef bones in the oven and then they'll cook their vegetables and things like that. And then they'll drain all of that off and just use the, the water, but they flavor it with the vegetables, with the miracoire, which is onion, celery, uh, and carrots, okay? So here we're just gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more stock, make sure all the squash is up under there. And then we're just gonna bring this back up to a bowl, okay? Nice and simmer. That's gonna allow for the squash to get nice and tender. And then we're gonna put it in our blender, okay? All right. I just checked on the Brussels sprouts. Let me clean this off and then I'll kind of show you how the Brussels sprouts are coming along. Any questions so far? I hope you guys are enjoying it. Okay. Tiffany, I just want to let you know that you're doing a really good job and uh, you have about 28 minutes. Just letting you know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I did a, a, um, a chicken dish. I showed the students how to make, um, it's like a chicken and gravy dish last week and my, my nephews ate it in front of them. They were so mad. Okay, so this is going pretty good. So this um, this is the thing. Tiffany, is this something that would freeze pretty well? Yes. Make sure you get freezer safe uh, containers though, absolutely. And then you could freeze it. Uh, a lot of times you get the little small jars, might have one, I oh, might not hit one. These are perfect, okay, like that. I don't think, Rubbermaid makes some freezer safe ones, but you can put those in there as well. 
okay? And then put the top on it, and these are great, especially, I mean, it's so cold. It's so romantic. I mean, I don't have a man, but if anybody know anybody, just, just pray. I love that we're doing a soup, though, because it is something that you do crave when it's cold, and it's so quick and easy, but if you buy them store-bought, they're loaded with sodium. It's really hard to find, like, a low-sodium suit that tastes decent um, as far as like a pre-made version. So I love making like a big batch ahead and being able to freeze it so that it's, you know, just as easy to pull out during a busy week. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I, I love, um, you know, this, this time of the year and these are such a, a really go-to and they're so easy to cook. Like I said, if you don't want to, um, do all that cutting, just buy the ones that are already prepackaged. They have onions already cut up. Now I'm gonna show you something that I use because I know for Thanksgiving, I'm gonna be really busy. Uh, this is another, you're making soup. So if you're making um, your stuff, you can get this and it already, sometimes you don't wanna buy the huge things of herbs and seasoning. Uh, Food Line and Harris Teeter sells is that I saw it last year for the first time. But this has everything in it. It has a little package of herbs in here and it has your celery and onion already cut up. Okay, and they're very, very, very fresh. And you can use as much as not, and then you can take this and use it in a soup, use it in some other ingredients and it's so easy for you. And then you can just add your stock to it um, and, you know, and your stuff and mix. And you don't have to go through all that trauma of trying to cut up all of those vegetables. Some people like that. But some of us, if you're busy, I'm a mom of a four-year-old nephews, and so I'm very, very, very busy. So sometimes I don't have time to do a lot of that chopping and cooking because I had to get my nephew to come get my four-year-old because he would be running back and forth right about now. So this is another thing that came out. It's called East Coast Fresh. It's called Stuffing Mixed with Herbs, and uh, it's really great. It comes in it. Um, yeah, I thought it was really good for my stuff in last year. So when I saw this in the store, I went on and picked it up because it's really great. And you don't have to worry about buying all of those seasonings because the seasoning pack is already there. Okay, while this is going on, it's going on really great. Okay, you can see here, oh, it's coming along great. Now you want your, Squash to be about fork tender, so we're gonna give that a few more minutes, and then I'm gonna show you how to drain that, drain that off. Now, while we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead on and cut up my apples for the uh, for the suit apple. Now, I'm gonna show you how to plate these in just a minute. I'm gonna use one apple just briefly to show you because I know we're running short on time, and I want to make sure that I uh, plate these as well. So I'm gonna start off, these are Granny Smith apples. You can use whatever apples you like. I just like the tartness of the Granny Smith. I'm gonna peel this here. Oh guys, this, you have to, you know, send me an email or a picture once you make this soup. I mean, the aroma from this is just absolutely great. Now, I don't wanna boil my water all the way out. So I'm just gonna turn it down just a little bit Okay, just turn it down just a little bit, let it continue to cook. And you see it's all up under there, all up under the uh, broth. And especially if you're not feeling too well or whatever, it's, it's really great. Now, if you don't have, if you have chicken bouillon or something, add that with some water, <clears throat> they'll do the same thing and give you the same flavor if you don't have chicken stock. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut this apple in half here. Here and I take out the core. Here, take out the core here. Now, stewed apples are great just by themselves. A lot of times people buy them out the can. I'm not a fan of that. So I'm gonna show you how to make it real quick. Okay. 
here. All right. Now I'm going to just go ahead on and turn this on low. While it's going, I'm going to take my, just kind of toss this down, just do a rough chop again on these apples. Okay. And these are another, uh, these are sides that you can make that are going good. And I'm going to plate this up so you can kind of see how it's going to work. I'm going to put it all together in just a second. Here. Oh, the, the Brussels sprouts look heavenly. Okay, I'm going to set these over here just for a second. And I'm going to show you how to make sure your squash is done. So here, I'm just going to get one of the squashes out. And if you can stick that fork in it, just like a potato, you can stick that fork in there nice and smooth, you know it's done. Get a thick piece. If you can stick that fork in there, nice and smooth, like that, go straight through, you know they're done. Now, before you blend it up, just get a little taste. Just taste the um, your broth. Oh, good, good, good. I'm gonna add just a little bit more salt. You can add as much as you like or just a little. And these are great gifts as well. You know, definitely with so many people sick right now uh, going through, is this is really great to, to give to a loved one, to give to somebody um, <clears throat> who may need that extra time. There's nothing like a good homemade uh, soup, okay? All right, now here, um, this is nice and hot. And while it's hot, now, if you don't have a blender, or an immersion blender, you can always use a your um, a potato masher or a um, um, a whisk and kind of mash it up so it's um, nice and uh, smooth until you get it to the consistency. Here, I'm just going to use a handy handy blender here. Okay, so I'm going to take this. Turn my camera here so you can see me. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, it's gonna pour it into the blender here. All right, now I'm gonna replace the top, and now I'm just gonna put this on soup puree, okay? So it's nice and salt. Again, nice and smooth. I just wanna check the consistency, okay? Everything nice and broke up, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, I can pour this out before you freeze it, of course, make sure you let it cool, okay? Now, I'm just going to pour it. Can everybody see? Okay. <clears throat> beautiful, 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 beautiful. Beautiful soup here. Now, <clears throat> perfect. Now, so my soup is ready. Now, how easy, how easy was that? Let's get a little taste now. I forgot my nutmeg. It's fine. I'm just going to sprinkle the top of it. Now, if you want it a little, if you want to add a little sweetness to it, if you want the sweet savory, you can add a little bit of uh, regular brown sugar or white sugar or no sugar to add, you know, just to, to keep it nice and healthy. Uh, but if you want a little sweetness, add a little to while it's cooking or even while you're blending, add a little like a teaspoon of sugar. So here I'm just going to add a little nutmeg to give that earthiness, that nice earthiness flavor. Finish that up. 
Okay. And the soup is ready. Let me get a little taste here. Mmm. Oh, wow. That's good. Oh, wow. On a cold day, that's beautiful. Now here, I'm gonna move this down. It's a little hot. I see the pan here. Now, <clears throat> let me show you how quick these apples are. Now, so I got my apples. I'm gonna add a little bit of, get my recipe here. How am I doing on time? You have about 15 minutes left. Okay, great, perfect. Okay, so I got my apples here. I'm just gonna add a little water, okay? Now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go ahead on and put my apples in. Oh, one flew away on me, but all right. Okay, now, now some people add a little bit of brown sugar to theirs, but we're trying to cut out the, uh, this is cinnamon, brown cinnamon here. You can add brown sugar to this. I'm gonna use, the add the give the sweetness that I want with the tartness, I'm gonna add some maple syrup. Okay, so I'm gonna add just a little sprinkle of cinnamon here. Okay. Now I'm gonna cook those apples down. Okay. Now if cinnamon and apples don't say holidays, I don't know what does. Now, you can also, if you really want to be dangerous, you can treat this just as if you like you were making an apple pie. So you can add the nutmeg, you can add butter, you know, with that, uh, add butter to this, nutmeg, a little bit of lemon juice, and that'll, you can bring it out uh, even more. Tonight, we're just kind of doing it a little healthier version. We're just gonna uh, stew these in the water, put that water on down, okay? And this is like on a medium high heat, so we're getting that worked out, okay? Now we'll get my, plates out because I'm going to show you how to plate this up. If you were doing this for a meal, okay? So you have your soup here. I'm going to move my camera down just camera angle, okay? Like here. All right, so I got my apples working. It's not going to take that long with these, okay? Now it's just simmering in its own juice in this water. That's what I want. This is gonna, that water is gonna cook itself on out, okay? But I want a little texture to it. I don't want my, I want this to be a, a side dish. I don't want it to be applesauce. So don't overcook them, okay? You don't wanna overcook them. You just wanna get them nice and tender. You wanna um, maintain that crunch. If you want them, a little softer, then by all means, continue to cook them a little bit more, okay? Now, while those are going, I'm gonna get my Brussels sprouts on out. Oh boy. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Look at that beautiful color on those Brussels sprouts. Okay? That's what you want. And you see the oven did the work. Okay? The oven did the work. Let the oven do the work. Okay? So now I got these here. Now, with the Brussels sprouts, you can, if you want a little color, and if you don't, if you don't want the heat, don't add. I got some pure maple syrup here, and then I got a little bit of red pepper flakes. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the red pepper flakes just as a garnish, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of the maple syrup. Don't make sure you use good maple syrup. Don't use um. 
the regular pancake syrup. That's not going to give you the flavor. It has way too much uh, sugar in it. You want just a pure maple syrup. And I'm just going to garnish it just a little bit. If you're trying to avoid the sugar, don't do this. Okay. Now, can you add a little pat of butter to this? Absolutely. If you would like, or if you want to get a little bit more shine on this, add a little bit more olive oil. Okay. So I'm just gonna take this beautiful color. I'm just gonna mix that in, get that nice roasted flavor. And I'm gonna add this to my dish here, okay? This is something else that you can do uh, and then have this as a dish. Great for lunch the next day. Okay, so my apples, we're done, just that quick. See it cooked out, see the water is cooked out of them. That's what I wanted. I'm gonna add just a little bit of maple syrup here. You can also use honey to this, okay? Now, anybody know what goes good? I'm gonna set that off the heat. Just a little bit, we'll move this back. Okay. So here, now what goes apples? Now this wasn't in there, I'm just throwing this in here. One, because my nephew is going, there's no meat. So I have some nice, pork chops that I bake. They're very thin cut, so they don't take that long. It took about 25 minutes in the oven. So some nice baked pork chops. Okay. Just put a couple up there. Like that. Now I got my apples here. Put them on the side with that. Okay, so I got my nice stewed apples just that quick. And then of course, my beautiful butternut squash. Okay. All within an hour, uh, not the pork chops. Okay, so your apples are great with any side. If you're, you know, and, and this is just, you know, one, you know, small serving. So if you're gonna cook these for a lot of people as a side, you wanna add that. Remember, you can add cinnamon, you can add brown sugar. And I'll, I like mine with a little bit of texture, but of course, the more you cook them, um, the softer they're gonna become. So don't overcook them because you don't want mush unless you just like it like that, okay? Look at those Brussels sprouts, nice and tender, cooked really good. And your sweet potatoes, you again, nice and fork tender. Okay, and all right, so let me try to, oh wow, really, really good. Okay, so sweet potatoes, your butternut squash soup, and of course your Brussels, roasted Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes with, and I just added the pork chop to say there's a great dish you can use. You can eat all vegetable. You can uh, add grilled chicken to this, salmon, any of those type of things. I wouldn't put apples with salmon, but I mean, you can do what you want to, but I would use maybe chicken or pork or something like that. Turkey burgers is also good with this as well. And look at my front door open. See, young people. <laughs> so, all right, any questions? I do have a comment that I learned the other day what not to do. I was making some clam chowder and was gonna share some with a neighbor and I didn't give it time to cool. So I put it in a plastic carton and the carton melted. So oh, yeah. Be sure you cool it enough before you put it in the carton. If you're yeah, going to freeze absolutely. it. Absolutely. Especially with the soups, because anything that you seal and hot and put in the refrigerator, bacteria can grow if you don't give it time to cool. So make sure you cool it down because you can't see the bacteria, but Lord knows you will feel it. Okay, so uh, you want to always make sure you cool down 
your vegetables, things like that, especially when you, if you're cooking late at night, um, you wanna make sure you cool those down before you put them in the refrigerator. So, okay, any questions? We wanna thank you so much, Tiffany. You always do a really great job. So thank you for that. Thank oh. you also, Kate, um, and everyone who joined on, um, joined in. We hope that you're going to join in on the next cooking class, which will be in December. And I'll send that to everyone so you can have that too. Uh, we'll have a different chef, but thank you so much, Tiffany, for all that you do. Thank oh, you. No thank, thank you. So you. Much for it was really great. Now, my nephew's already told their friend, yeah, Mom, I keep to-go boxes because I'm the neighborhood <laughs> cook. My pantry is like filled up, uh, but it's a blessing. It's all, you know, the one thing that I've learned is that you don't know who's in need. And um, I think if you have something to share, um, you know, sometimes, you know, as a Christian, I think sometimes people are like, well, the Lord needs to tell me. You don't have to, nobody has to tell you to help nobody or feed somebody. You know, it's just the right thing to do oftentimes. And so if you're in the store and you, you cook something extra, like you said, take it to that neighbor, take it to that, that young, you know, just, just feed them. Cause sometimes um, that might be the nice, the only meal a lot of people get. And that's the one thing that I'm learning. I have students who I've been making uh, food bags and I know some students don't have food. So I, I've been telling them, hey, don't you wanna help me do some, you know, these work on these recipes. And I just make up recipes for them that are very easy for them to cook and it gives them confidence, but then I know they have food at home. So we have to be a little creative right now with what's going on, but it's still an opportunity to help kids and to be a blessing to them, okay? You guys okay. have a wonderful Thanksgiving and wonderful holiday. Thank, Thank you, you too. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.